Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another what's for dinner video. I hope you guys enjoy. The beginning is going to be kind of a recap of videos that I already put up this week. Um, all of those videos will be listed in the description box below so y'all can go check them out if you're interested. And then I have a couple meals that y'all will see towards the end that we really enjoyed. I guess this week you can consider it to be kind of family favorites. Um, that's kind of how it worked out but I still hope you guys enjoy and let's go ahead and get started. So we are starting out this week with some videos that I have already posted. This first one is the Pizza Night. This was a collab with Shauna and Kat. And I'll have that video listed down below for you guys. And then next is our camping vlog. I posted that on Thursday. So on that one, I did the food and the fun. So if you want to see either of these recipes, then you definitely want to go check out that video. I'll have it linked down below as well. This dutch oven recipe was super delicious and you don't want to miss it next was wednesday's crock pot video we had some italian beef y'all this was so delicious and then i made some apple pie bread pudding oh my gosh just look at that super delicious i'll have that video listed down below as well you don't want to miss any of those So next we have some ranch Ritz chicken. Y'all, this is super delicious. We've made it before and it's super easy. So I just have about three chicken breasts there that I have just cut in half to make them thinner. And then I'm just gonna give them a good coating of ranch. You can use whatever brand you like. And I'm just gonna coat those well on both sides and then just sit them to the side for a second and kind of let them marinate while um, I get the breading mixture together. So for the breading mixture, it is super simple. I just take a sleeve of crushed up Ritz crackers, put those in a bowl that I can coat the chicken in that's big enough, and then you're just going to add in your uh, mild cheddar. I normally just like to use mild cheddar, but as you see, I didn't have enough of it, and so I just put in some of that Colby Jack blend, um, but you can use any. I feel like any yellow um, cheese works perfect. So I just mix that together well. If you want to throw some seasonings in, you, in there, you can, but I don't because you've got all the flavor from the ranch that you coated your chicken in. And then you're just going to take and coat your chicken on both sides in that breading mixture and then place it on a greased baking pan. I do have my oven preheated at 375. And then you're just going to cook those for about 20 to 25 minutes until they are fully cooked through. Make sure that the internal temp is 165. So if there's ever any breading mixture left, I always just take and kind of pat it on top on ones that I feel like need it. With using the crackers, it's kind of harder for it to actually coat on the chicken. And so I like to do this and it gives you that little extra crunch on top. 
So I just made some homemade mac and cheese and some corn. Y'all, this was super delicious. It is a very yellow meal, but it was a family favorite. Next up, we have got some meatloaf. I got a request for this in a comment recently, so I thought I would make it. And I'm gonna be totally honest, I'm pretty sure I don't make the same meatloaf every single time. I just kind of add what I feel like, what feels good, um, what looks right. So I'll kind of just go over the basics with you. So I have got, for us, I like to do three pounds because we like leftovers. Um, one of our favorite things is meatloaf sandwiches and you have to use um, leftover meatloaf for that. It is so good. <laughs> But I've got three pounds of ground beef there and then I'm just going to season it well with that 1836 beef rub and for us that's just kind of one of the all-in-one seasonings. It's got your garlic, it's got your onion powder, it's got your paprika, it's got salt, pepper, it just has everything and so that's why I use that. If you don't have that um, like an all-purpose then you can just use the seasonings individual and then I like to add quite a bit of Worcestershire sauce that also gives it some really nice flavor and then here I'm adding in some breadcrumbs normally I wouldn't add the Italian style um, but that's all I had at that time um, I need to go get me some regular but I couldn't taste it so I guess it's all it all worked out in the end and then I like to add one egg per pound of meatloaf so I had three pounds there so I added in three eggs and then I'm just going to kind of scramble that up with my hands if you don't like watching this part you can skip through but I'm just going to mix it well with my hands so I know everything is well combined So my mom got me these loaf pans a couple years ago and y'all, I have a couple of them and I have one dedicated just for meatloaf because it cooks up perfectly for meatloaf and I love having this, the size when it bakes up. Um, it's good to slice and have for meatloaf sandwiches. It's like, it's the perfect bread size. Um, so I love using these. I'll try to find it and have it linked down below. Um, if not, then just you can look it up on Amazon. But if you know, you know, I don't like ketchup. And so for my half, I always just do barbecue sauce and then I just squirt regular ketchup on top. I've never been one to like make a special meatloaf topping um, to go on top. I've always just done plain ketchup and plain barbecue on my little side. And to go with that, I made me some green beans and then I made some mashed potatoes. And then I made Luke some Brussels sprouts and I'm going to share how I made those Brussels sprouts in just a second. So for the Brussels sprouts, as you've seen, I just used one of those packages of the frozen Brussels sprouts. I did put that in the microwave for about four minutes just to kind of get it started so it didn't take as long cooking. And then I just added those to a pan there with about a fourth of a cup of red onion and then I've added in some more butter and then I'm just gonna cook those up till the onions get translucent and then we'll add in the rest of the ingredients Thank you. 
So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I just kind of cook on the whim a lot and season as I go. Season with the heart is what I like to call it. So I've got some salt, some pepper, some Worcestershire in there, and then I'll also be adding in some garlic powder as well. Um, I feel like for this, you can just kind of add what you think your family is going to enjoy. Um, if you like cheese, you can also do cheese. I personally don't like Brussels sprouts, so that's why I made me green beans because Luke doesn't like green beans. But he likes Brussels sprouts, so it kind of worked out. <laughs> I did add some bacon bits in there. I actually added in the bacon bits to the green beans and the Brussels sprouts. And then I also added in some paprika. So I'm just going to kind of keep that on low medium heat and get that all mixed together. And it's just going to kind of flavor season and marry all the ingredients together. And here it is right out of the oven. You just want to make sure that the internal temperature reaches 155. Here is my plate. Uh, absolutely. I love meatloaf if it has barbecue sauce on top. <laughs> this is a really yummy meal. Next was Luke's birthday dinner. He asked for chicken broccoli talk casserole. Y'all, he loves this stuff. He requests this all the time. I have a recipe link for this. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. You, This recipe is a must try. It is so delicious, so creamy with the tater tots and the cheese and the chicken and the broccoli. Yum. So we made him a little birthday cake and then um, kind of set up the table if you don't know, he sleeps throughout the day, so we were able to do all this while he was asleep, and then he woke up to a birthday sign and a cake and all that little fun birthday stuff. He requested a yellow cake with some canned chocolate icing. He absolutely loves that. That's one of his favorites. And lastly, we have some Dorito casserole. Y'all, it has been so long since I've made this, and it's really, really good. So it's super easy. You're just going to take, um, I do a, a pound and a half to two pounds of ground beef, and then I've got um, the taco seasoning per pound. 
and then instead of adding water to that you're going to add a can of tomato soup i just like to use the kroger brand one and then you're just going to mix that in and it's going to look kind of like a sloppy joe meat and then we will get it put in the casserole so as y'all know I love the crescent dough sheets, so I'm going to be using a crescent dough sheet. If you don't have it, you can definitely just use regular crescents. You just want to make sure that you pinch all the sides so none of that filling can get out. Um, but the good thing about the crescent dough sheets is that you don't have to worry about that. You can just lay it out and that's it. So this is a little smaller pan, um, but you can also do this in a 9x13. It'll just be laid flat instead of having the edges like I have. Um, but honestly, I like the edges on there. Um, I like the stability and I like, I love crescents. So um, you can do this in the smaller pan like I'm doing, or you can do it in a nine by 13, um, whatever you want. So I've just added that meat mixture in there and I've just smoothed it out where it's even on top. And then I'm gonna add on some of that Mexican style cheese on top of that, give it a good coating. I do have my oven preheated at 375 and then on top of the cheese you're just going to add on your Doritos. I had some of the little bags we had bought from camping and so I had just crushed those up. I used three bags in total. I wasn't sure how many I was going to need um, but I ended up using three bags of those. They were mix matched. I had some off brand <laughs> and some regular. Um, and then you're just going to bake this in a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. You just want to make sure that your crescents are nice and golden brown because um, everything else is cooked. You're just going to kind of cook your crescents and get it nice and warmed through. And here it is right out of the oven. Y'all, I'm telling you, this was so good. You can serve it up with your favorite salsa rice or we love we have been loving the Mexican street corn salad lately that's what we served it with I'll have a link to that recipe down below but I hope you guys enjoyed this what's for dinner video I hope it gave you some inspiration to cook more for your family at home try something new maybe your family will find a new family favorite I hope you guys have a fabulous week and I will see y'all in the next one bye guys